welcome to this Dittmer Knittery Making It video. Whether you are a new viewer or a returning viewer, I'm really glad to have you here today. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, I'm making a hat. Now, of course, later on, I will be felting this hat, but today I'm showing the knitting. I started the hat on my knitting machine. It is a Knit King 230 flatbed metal machine. I like it very much. Um, and then I'm finishing the hat by hand. And that's most of what I'm going to be showing today is the finishing by hand. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you enjoy. knitted on the machine. I just showed you a clip of the machine. And so I thought at this point I could share what I've done, what I'm going to do, and show you kind of how I put it together. So I, like I said, I knitted this part of the hat on my machine. And so I knitted, um, a long strip so it's folded in half here I'm trying to leave it like it's sitting because I kind of had it where I thought maybe you could see the things I was going to talk about so I knitted this piece on the machine and then I'm going to pick up the stitches along this starting edge, which is the brim of the hat. I'm going to pick up the stitches there. I have already picked up the stitches with my knitting needles. And then I'm going to finish off. But first I need to remove this ravel cord and waste yarn. So the white, the thin white that you see is just a piece of, of length of cotton lightweight yarn that I call the ravel cord. And it just um, creates a, a way for you to be able to pick up these stitches after you've knitted on the machine. So this is the waist yarn that I start on the machine, the white. And this is some white um, wool. And then I do a row of the ravel cord. And then I begin working the hat. And on the machine, you see this side the wrong side as you knit. And I knit back and forth. I actually cast on 100 and knit back and forth for, I want to say, 56 rows. So, like I said, the next thing I'm going to do, I've already picked up stitches along this edge, and I know this is the brim edge. And now I'm going to just pull this ravel cord out and remove the waist yarn. Now, probably not going to be able to show on camera getting the ravel cord out because it can be a little, take a little time. And sometimes I cut it. Sometimes I'm able to pull the whole thing out. Let's see what I can do here. Let's see if you can see what I'm doing. And uh, again, this is all, this is waist yarn. And so while I might be able to um, pull it out and use it again, if I can't, I'm not going to worry about that. I'll, I'll, we'll just discard it if I don't, if I'm not able to use it again. So there, I pulled that much. Uh, I cut a piece of it because it was just getting tight on the needle there. Um, and I pulled that part of the ravel cord out. And look at that. <laughs> the waist yarn just separates from the cast on stitches and the stitches are on my needle. So I will continue to remove this ravel cord. Knowing that I can do so because I have picked up these stitches and they're the 
waist yarn just separates from my work. And there I have an edge with stitches on my knitting needles and I can finish off that edge. I suppose I should have mentioned the yarn. I did have it sitting here. It is Brown Sheep Wool, Lamb's Pride, 85% wool and 15% mohair. This is color bright blue and I believe, I, I'm, I'm positive I purchased this from a third party that I did not get it from Brown Sheep Wool and this is a very old label. I got it on the internet. So here I am finishing off this edge that I was showing you that I just separated the um, waist yarn from. And like I said, this is the brim. Finishing off the binding off of the brim and then with these same needles I will pick up the other edge, the crown edge. So, So there's that finished edge, and yes, it does curl, but it's a hat. I want that to, um, I usually roll it or fold it up, and in the felting process, it, I could flatten it however I choose, but that roll in the brim is nothing to be concerned about. So I have finished off the brim edge, and now I will pick up stitches on this edge and as you can see I have already done a few of the decrease rows for the crown. I did on the machine a few three or four decrease rows round rows on the machine. But then once I have um, these stitches on the needle, the same needle that I just used. Then I will do the seam up to there. And then I can begin knitting in the round and complete the decreases for the crown and finish off the hat. Um, this is medium weight yarn and this is a size 9 knitting needle which I just I've uh, made enough hats like this that I kind of know what size to use for the handwork um, and you just you know, uh, like I said I've done it a few times and that's how I have an idea of what tools to use hats are still kind of guesswork for me and especially I've only made um, this is only my second hat on this machine I had made oh maybe six or eight on the other machine but this is my first one on this machine so that's what I'll do next is pick up these stitches And I could, I could leave this, wait to pick up the stitches until I have completed the back seam up to that point, but it's just cleaner if, um, you know, I can remove the ravel cord and the waist yarn. So to get my needle, to get my work onto my needle, 
I am just picking up these stitches next to the white stitch. I'm picking up the blue stitch and like I pointed said in the first when I first started this uh, a few minutes ago. <laughs> anyway, you know what I mean. Uh, this is what's called the ravel cord, just a lightweight piece of yarn between the working yarn and the waist yarn. And the waist yarn is just a, a way of um, giving you something to hold on to and work with so that your working yarn and the, the finishing and the ending row of your working yarn is nice and clean. Now, not everyone uses waist yarn. Some people are skilled enough that they simply cast straight onto the machine and when they um, remove their work from the machine, they don't use waist yarn, but I do. <laughs> this is how I do it. So I'm picking up stitches along here, and like I said, you can see that I have done some of the decreases, and yes, my yarn does have a ladder, but that ladder will close in felting. It's already beginning to close as I pick up stitches and release the tension in the yarn. Um, there won't be a ladder in the finished work at all. And um, so when you, before you remove, um, before I remove the ravel cord and the waist yarn, I do count my stitches and make sure I have all of them on my needle. So here's the hat so far. This is the brim edge that I've finished off. This is the crown edge. I have my needles in there to finish the decreases. After I finish seaming up this back seam. And I think I showed, I know I showed this recently, the mattress stitch. Very good way to join two edges. And so when I finish the seam, then I will begin knitting in the round and complete the decreases and close the crown, weaving the ends, and the hat will be ready for hot water felting. working the decreases for the crown of the hat. So I was counting it. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. Um, decrease ten every other round. So right now when I finish this round I will have fifty. So I will continue to decrease until I have five and then I will close the top. And see, you can see the decreases, but
but there are no longer any ladders, any noticeable ladders there, and there will not be ladders um, when it's felted. It's going to be a nice hat. It comes together nice and quickly uh, when I'm able to knit 50-some rows on the machine. I'm near to closing up the top of the hat, and I have changed to double-pointed needles. And I enjoy using double points. Um, I learned pretty early in my knitting career. I made something like, you know, like a round bottle holder and learned to do um, double-pointed needles. I just keep my marker on, any, anywhere on the first needle. And this is a decrease round. So I'm knitting two stitches and then knitting two together. So when I complete this round, I will be down to 30 stitches to get to the end of the hat. <clears throat> You know what I mean. I'll have 30 stitches around and I will need to do a couple more decrease rounds and then be able to finish off. But I wanted you to see the double pointed work. I do enjoy it. And I'll show you again that you can see the decreases in the crown that I did both on the machine and by hand. And it, it will felt so nicely. I have my final stitches on two double points. I have ten stitches left. So I'm going to decrease so I only have five stitches. That marker out of the way there. Hat gets kind of heavy after you get this far along. to five stitches. I'm going to slip them all onto this one needle. I'm going to clip my yarn and leave a long, I always use a long <laughs> length to weave in ends, but especially at the top of a hat, the top of a hat, stitches around the top can really undergo a lot of strain. Now this hat is going to get felted, so it's not quite as much of a concern, but it is so easy for these top stitches to pop out if you don't have a long length and um, weave in the ends very long. <clears throat> I think you know what I mean. So I'm just putting my needle through these five final stitches. through and right before I get it very very tight I'm going to put my needle through the hole at the top and then pull it tight from the inside. Neat top to my knitted hat. Little piece of fuzz there. That looks very tidy. Nice hat. And let me show you 
the seam. There's the seam. This is the seam right here. So that will not be noticeable when the hat is finished. And when I do the seam and I begin it, I, um, I know I'm going to fold up the brim of the hat. So I do a few stitches so that the wrong side looks tidy. And then I move, and this is, this is the wrong side of the hat, the inside of the hat. So those first few stitches of my seam are a little bit more tidy because I did them as though this were the right side. And then I pushed my needle through and continued with mattress stitch on this side so that when this hat rolls up, that outside stitch is not going to show. When I roll the hat up like that, it will be a little more tidy. Now, not completely necessary because it's felted and this seam will felt well and, and not be very noticeable on the inside either, but certainly not noticeable on the outside. So after I weave in the ends and I have only two ends to weave in, this hat will be ready for hot water felting. Started it on the machine and finished it by hand. Hmm. Brown sheep wool, lamb's pride yarn. 